Thank you, comrades. Okay, so uh, for how many of you, is, is this our, your first convention? Beautiful. Well, it's my first summary at the convention. So I ask for you to bear with me. Um, I may have to sit down because my knees are wobbling. <laughs> but any, <laughs> I got my cheering crowd all set over there. <laughs> Comrades, first of all, you know, this convention is culminating four months of discussion, four months of everything that is, is happening, pulling all of our participation, all of our membership participation. That's important to keep in mind. But first, I want to give a huge thanks to the entire collective that made this convention happen. Comrades, the collectivity in organizing this convention shows in how organized everything was, right? Everybody had a smooth sailing. Of course, there's, you know, I'm not talking about the little bumps. I'm talking about the big bumps. But there are certain comrades who have gone way beyond the call of duty, let's say. And I want to really give a big uh, thank you to Daniel from Maine. Everybody find Daniel, because I don't see him. He's probably out running around washing linen, right? <laughs> Along with Lori, who also has been instrumental, she called me at 3 o'clock in the morning, worried about your all residents. So also, thank you very much for with Lori. And her comrade, Bobby Wood. Bobby really kept us in our toes and really stood up for all the little details that we forgot. So thank you. Thank you all. I hope people have had, comrades have had a great experience today. I hope that you have, a, have had a very learning and productive experience. And I want to I wanna really start by saying, you know, Joe's remarks were wonderful. And we appreciate the fact that he took time, and I know he worked on it like two months, for two months. Then he ran it by the different collectives to really come to such an excellent report that I say we should study it. Take it back to your clubs, decipher it, to, you know, check it out. Really study it and really think about the things that he said. Be open to everything, because that's how we communists work, right? We, we, we look at things from here, you know, from inside and outside, and that's how we make this, this party happen, and this is how we make this movement happen. He called on collectivity as our superpower. Individualism breaks up that collectivity, comrades. We have to make sure that we don't allow individualism to seep in. It's like, don't cross the picket line, right? He called for organizing and organizing in our communities building these mass movements, that that's who's going to be decisive in all of these things. 
We have to be continually working on the ground in our communities to build. And it doesn't necessarily have to be political. It can be even marath if you're a marathon runner or if you like knitting or if you like playing chess or checkers or, or Wordle. You know, you create a Wordle chat. I'm in one myself. Um, but these are all communities that could be mobilized at some point. Imagine if we had had such mobilization of these kinds of organizations when Gaza hit. We would have, I think, in my opinion, we would have been a little further down the road, right? Because we would have already been mobilized. And, you know, my niece, who she's a marathon runner, she picked up that uh, Palestinian flag and ran her marathon with that. This is, this is how you reach outside of your circles. This is how you reach the working class where they are at. And this is how you build that movement that's going to be the massive movement that we need to topple uh, capitalism. You know, many times I've been asked by, especially our newer members, is um, we need to do What's the best way to protect ourselves? We need to be prepared. We need to do this, you know, to protect ourselves. But there's no greater protection than building that community around you. No greater protection. It is why the Communist Party has survived over 100 years. It has built this community of communists that came through the Communist Party at some point or another. They may have left the party, but the party didn't leave them. They still have that, they and, and they're ready to stand up for us at, at any moment. And we have to build this community in our communities. I know that in my community, whether they, whether they like whether I'm a communist or not, they're going to stand up because I have built this community. No, they, they've gotten to know me. They've gotten to know that I'm not that, uh, you know, all that anti-communist propaganda that they feed you. You know, I don't eat babies and I don't kill people. You know, that, that kind of stuff is what I was told about communists. So anyway, um, the other thing is that, you know, the Communist Party has survived because we have been able to adapt to the situation at hand. Darwin has, has concluded, Darwin concluded that it's not the fittest that survives, it's the one that is the most adaptable. And how do we do that? We are constantly um, criticizing and self-criticism. We, we practice that constantly. And so that's how we begin, that's how we learn to adapt to the new situations, is through that process. You know, we, we, um, we bring the plus by being honest. We bring the plus by fighting for unity at our meetings. We bring the plus by setting aside our ego and fighting for what is best for the working class. Gus Hall once said, it, for communists, it's not the we that is important. It's, no, I'm sorry, let me get that right. It's not, for communists, it's we that is more important than me. That's right. Thank you. The plus is explaining issues that go beyond reforms because it is our Marxist training because of our Marxist training, we can make the connections between issues. Building relationships is vital to developing class consciousness outside of our left circles. And the Communist Plus, if you think about it, it's like, it's like dropping the mic because you know you have added value to the conversation, not driven by ego, but by an analysis of the current situation and what is best for the whole working class. I'm checking my notes here, sorry.
comrades, we have to get out the vote. In our local communities, you know, we have a lot of local elections that also are attempt by fascists to get into office. The recent announcement of the um, restraining order of the uh, uh, United, United Auto Workers 1018, I think I got that number right. That, um, did I get that number right? Anyway, they're the graduate students who are fighting. They're on this stand-up strike, sit stand-up strike. Um, there was a, a judge put a restraining order on them. They cannot go on on strike. We have to vote these judges out. We have to vote all of these members in the city councils, in our counties, in our members of Congress, in our senators. We have to vote the fascists out. We have to stop them wherever they are. Comrades, we need to have, we need to be a disciplined party. This is so important. We need to be mindful of uh, social media posts that are constructive, not guided by many, the how many likes you have. <laughs> Let me tell you that you begin to lose your way when you attack the party, the party publicly. Because, if you, if you truly had the interest of the party, you would bring it up in collectives, because that's where change happens. Not on social media, not attacking the party publicly. It is important to study. It's important to read Marx, Lenin. You know, you have a whole array of selections over there. It's important to study. But it's also important to be out on the ground. Because what you read, you don't even know how to apply it. That's the art. That's where, that's where the, what is that? The rubber meets the road, right? So, you know, I used to be very intimidated by people who can quote Lenin and Marx because I thought, oh, these are smart ones, right? And yeah, it's great they had an opportunity to read, to read it all, uh, all. I have not. Um, but that's not what makes you smart. What makes you smart is to be able to apply what you read, to be able to lead, mar lead mass movements. That's what makes you really smart. Comrades, if you are against racism, you have to check your actions. Racism is not as clear as a sign on the door that says no people of color can come in. Nowadays, it's very subtle. It's as subtle as when talking, when other people of color are talking. How you make people feel makes a big drift difference as to whether they will follow you, follow you and because you listen to what they have to say. It makes a big difference, comrades. Comrades, we are a party of internationalism. We are respectful of all parties, as par all parties have been respectful of us. We have never been in a situation where communists have ever walked out on us. Not during the Vietnam War, not Cuba, not the Iraqis. And they had all good reasons to, right? They, but they were motivated by proletarian internationalism. You should know, comrades, that the Israeli 
Communist Party is predominantly Palestinian and Arab. They make up 30% of the population. And when you walk out on the representative who you walking out on the Arab working class. So here I'm going to appeal to all of our seasoned members. Comrades, we need you. We need you to step up because we have such a growing population of our members. We need the help. They need, we need help in being able to establish a lot more clubs. There are comrades waiting to join, to, to group together in clubs. But we need you to be their mentors. We need you to give them guidance. We need you to show them how we are different from any other organization that have joined. So how do we, what is their, our culture? All of those things. So we need, we need this. We must go forward together, comrades, committed to putting the working class struggles front and center of our work, striving to be disciplined because it is the key to building a mass party, building a mass movement that will demand a system of putting people and so of putting people before profits. I am very optimistic about our party. Our comrade from from Chile mentioned last night. He said, "When you have the youth, you have the future," and I agree with him. And to steal another quote from our Chilean comrades, they say, the future has a party, and it is the Communist Party. And I say, our country has a future, and it is the Communist Party USA. Forward together! Forward together! Thank you, comrades.